Welcome to this workshop on worthiness, the coach of work uh, of worthiness, I chose to call it, because to me, there is some courage here in worthiness. Welcome to everybody who's here live. I'm thrilled to be seeing you all. Uh, my name, in case you're new around here, is Katrina Horn. I'm a life coach. I was born in Denmark and I wasn't always a life coach. And the reason I'm saying that is um, that I want to tell you I used to be a musician because that is going to be relevant for what I've got to share with you. So if you're here live, feel free to use the chat for any comments or um, any questions. If you stay till the end, then we can move into some coaching for anybody who wants to get coaching on their worthiness issues. Because when I say your worthiness issues, it means that we've all got them, right? Um, I mean, you can have done a lot of self-development and you can be very aware of a lot of things in your life. But the truth is we've all got issues with worthiness and it's not then a question of if we've got them it's more a question of where they're showing up in life and this is what I want to to talk to you about so I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to move briskly on because I think it's it's an important subject and we've got a lot to share we've got a lot to become aware of so anything I say today or anytime really is not so that you go into judgment of yourself it's so that you become aware right it's just to create awareness because if we want change in our lives all change starts with awareness so um i'll just get started with my presentation so today we will cover how to bust the myth that a lack of worthiness is just being modest, right? I mean, we can sort of pride ourselves with uh, not putting ourselves forward because, oh, I'm, I'm just modest, I'm humble, I don't know. I mean, we might have some thoughts going on like that, but that is not what I'm talking about. Being modest is, is not the same as feeling um, unworthy. Right, feeling unworthy is when you think that you are less than other people, that you are less worthy than other people. Being modest is knowing that you are as worthy as other people. Also, I would love to have you see that we don't need to suffer to want change, we can change through desire. Also, I'm doing an exercise with you and that's why I call this a workshop because it's not just about me talking and you sitting there listening. It's about you getting into the nitty gritty of your mindset and starting to shift what needs to be shifted. Uh, I'll be giving you a few journaling prompts and um, I'm not going to leave you a lot of time to journal on this workshop, but if you're watching this on the replay, please go ahead and stop uh, the video while you're journaling and uh, then start it when you've finished journaling. But for you who are here, Today, it's just like um, I'm inviting you to go into this subject and uh, you can take me up on my invitation um, and play with me today. And you can, of course, come back to all these questions in the replay. So I'll try to get out the replay today. I'll do my best. So, so that if there's anything you want to dive deeper into, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, then we're going to look at how you can nurture and anchor your belief in your worthiness. And then there'll be a coaching opportunity at the end. If you stay till the end, then I can get to coach you if you're game. So if I coach somebody, everybody can learn from that, right? So it's not about putting yourself forward and it's not about exposing yourself. It's, it's about... Mm, uh, looking at your issues and let other people benefit from that awareness that we're going to create. So let's move into all this. So taking your desire seriously is the ultimate sign that you feel worthy. So this was not always my case. Um, I'm just going to look in the chat. 
Yeah, I think I'm already recording, Stella. Let me just check that the recording is moving on. Yeah, I am recording, so there will be a replay. Um, I want to illustrate that with an example from my life. And if you're used to coming to these workshops, you know that I desire to live in a chateau. So I live in France and I really want to live in a chateau for various reasons, which I don't need to explain to you. I don't need to justify. And I don't need to show you, give you proof that this desire is really justifiable, right? I can just let it be enough that I, I want to live in a chateau. And that is totally all right. Of course, if you ask me questions, I could share lots of things with you about why and how and all that delicious stuff. Um, but it will not be to justify my desire, right? My desire is there. And I know that I'm worthy of living in a chateau. So there's no need for me to, to start explaining the why from that standpoint, right? I can just allow my desire to be there. And I'd invite you too to have a look at what you desire and not go into the justification. I can give you a little example here from real life. So let's scale it down from a chateau to let's say you want to get a new dress. Um, you want to buy a new dress. If you don't like dresses, just think about a new shirt or whatever that you might want to wear. So sometimes I think we go into the justification like we can't just go out and say, I desire a dress, a shirt or whatever, and then get it for ourselves. We need to go into a lot of mind drama about, yeah, I really need a new dress. I need it. I'm not, I don't want it. I need it. I need it because I've got my husband's 60th birthday coming up and we've got a big party and I need to look good at the party. And so I need a new dress, right? Or I've got a job interview, so I need this new shirt for it. When we, when we cannot allow our desires just to exist without the justification, then it's a sign that we've got a few worthiness issues running. And of course, this need not be conscious. Um, very few people run around thinking or saying to themselves, I'm so unworthy, I'm so unworthy. But what I'm talking about today is the unconscious thoughts that we've got running. And my aim today is to bring these thoughts into the open so that once we can actually see them, what it is that we're thinking, well, then we can do something about it. Then we can change them. That's what coaching is about. It's about changing our thoughts, changing our perspective. So there's so much power in that. So welcome to the people who are joining. We've already started. And what I'd like to draw your attention to, first of all, is the comparison trap. And I really got caught up in this comparison trap because I used to be a musician, as I told you. I used to be a professional musician uh, in classical music. And in classical music, you work a lot on your instrument, you hone your skills, and um, you try really for perfection, right? So that when you play the concert to the public, it looks just like perfection. So that's what you're striving to do, although you'll never be perfect. Like even the biggest stars, they make mistakes, right? And they're not always satisfied with their performance. But to us from the outside, we can't see that with professional music, everything looks perfect, right? So I really got caught up in that trap by, I used to play the harp, so I compared myself to other harpists. And I thought, wow, they're so much better than me. Let me just do what they do. Let me just be what they are. So I was looking for my value, comparing myself to other people. And we can't know our value in other people because the whole comparison is a game we cannot win. Trying to be like others have what others have or do what others do 
will never be satisfying because other people will always be better at being them, right? So when I compared myself to other harpists, well, I was always going to fall short, wasn't I? Because they were always going to be better at doing what they were doing, right? So there's no point in comparing ourselves. And when we strive to, to find our value by looking at other people and then looking back at ourselves, well, then we're going completely wrong because we cannot win in this game. There's always going to be people who are smarter than we are, who are more beautiful than we are, who are more successful, who are richer, who are stronger, who are thinner, who are always. And then there are going to be people who are less so and we are somewhere on the scale between the absolute best and the absolute worst if we can define that yeah so we're going to be always somewhere in between and knowing exactly where we are on that scale first of all I don't think you can know secondly it doesn't give us any value it doesn't make us feel worthy or valuable so I hope you're with me on that so it's not about being the best. It's about being your best. And I'm pausing a little bit here because I really want you to feel the difference. And I think it's such a nice saying to return to. And, and I constantly remind myself of that. Like coming on to speak with you, I thought, oh, I must make sure that, oh, I must do this, I must do that. No, 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 let me not think like that. Let me just make sure that I am at my best, that I show up my best, right? If you compare me to another coach, well, then you will find differences. So what I find useful to think about in life is not am I as good as or am I better than, it's just to think, oh, I'm different, right? I'm different because I'm me. And wouldn't it be boring if everybody was the same? Wouldn't it be boring if all life coaches were exactly the same and said exactly the same thing in exactly the same way? Wouldn't that be boring? Wouldn't it be boring if all musicians just played in the same old way so there'd be no variety? So... Instead of thinking, oh, I have to be the best, let's just start thinking about what if I was actually my best? And that is the most honoring thing I can be to me. That is the most worthiness feeling, provoking feeling I can think of. When I feel that I'm at my best, then I feel good about myself. Right. So I don't look to others to see whether they are doing better. I can look to others and we're going to look to others, but not from a comparison point of view. It's from an inspirational point of view. And that is what we go deeper into in my course on dream design. And I don't know whether we've got any dream designers here. But um, if we do, then you might recognize the exercise that we're going to, to do together or some of it, right? So it's very difficult to feel worthy when you know you're not being the best version of yourself, when you're hiding and when you're playing safe. So in personal development, in life coaching, we talk about hiding. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we are hiding. It means that we are not allowing ourselves to be all of who we can. It means sometimes that we are people pleasing. It means sometimes that we adjust our behavior to suit other people's expectations. Or what I discovered for me, actually, I was, I was modifying my behavior. I was not being myself. I was being fake. And as I say in my TED talk, um, charmingly so, but I was being fake because I couldn't love myself as I was. So I thought I had to be something different. So that was me hiding. Hiding, uh, well, I often talk about a mask that we put on 
because we can put on a mask, say, of a, a professional musician, a life coach, a teacher, a doctor. We can, we can take on our identity as something separate from who it is we really are. And then we can spend our lives living up to that identity. And the identity is something that we have somewhere, somehow, at some point in our life, identified with, yeah? So we think, oh, the, the best musicians, they are like this. Let me be like that. Instead of exploring, well, how can I be my best? So that's what we mean by hiding. It's not actually that you're hiding. It's that you're not bringing your skills, your qualities, your values, your, your gifts, to the world because you think that they're not good enough, that they won't be valued. Do you see what I mean? And that leads us to, to play safe, meaning that we don't take any risk. We don't go for what it is we really want. We don't take our desires seriously. We don't ask for what it is we really want because, well, it might not be good enough. Other people might be upset, right? We might fail. All these things um, can have us play safe and hide who it is we really are. So if you have got worthiness issues running in your subconscious, I like to talk about programming and I like to compare our, our, our behavior and our thoughts our feelings to a computer program, which is, of course, nonsense because we're not. But we have got these programs running somehow. We have got beliefs running. And it's really the beliefs that I liken to programs. And we are very likely to play out our beliefs in our lives, meaning that if we believe something, then we're going to make that belief true because we cannot believe one thing and then prove ourselves wrong, that would lead to schizophrenia perhaps, right? So we always try to have our beliefs be true. So if you have some worthiness issues running in your subconscious, you may have problems with money, never having quite enough, feeling always a lack around money, you may be throwing yourself away, and I say with sex, but if that is a little bit shocking to you, just substitute it. I used to um, just be very frivolous with my time. I used to gift my time, effort, and energy on people who didn't appreciate it, um, who didn't think it was really valuable, like who didn't really consider that at all. So that could be your case. So you throw away your services, your time, your money uh, for free or for much less than their value. Maybe you're not really asking for what you work in your work. Maybe you're not asking for a pay rise or something like that. And maybe you're not spending money on yourself. You're spending it on a thousand ways in which you're not really getting any satisfaction or you're getting the short-lived satisfaction of buying yourself a gimmicky thing that you think oh I must have that and that will make me feel good right so you squander a lot of money on something that is not going to really ultimately make you feel good it's only for a very short time and it's not going to ultimately and in a durable way bring you pleasure also you may stay in relationships too long with people who don't value you or treat you with respect. So you might be tolerating a lot. You may not see the value or contribution that you have. You may not have a, a clear awareness of your value and what you can bring to the world. And so you have, um, you have difficulty in esteeming yourself and, and feeling the self-esteem that we all need to feel worthy. Also, you may be experiencing a chronic sense of depletion, never enough, never enough time, never enough energy, never enough of whatever, not enough, well, whatever. 
just fill in what it is for you. And you may also, and I found that really difficult to say in a very short time, possess a certain survival vigilance because in your life you have experienced sudden or unpredictable, inexplainable change or loss. So you might be very vigilant having sort of a background noise of fear running in your system or what I like to call your formula. So you're sort of on your guard all the time and you feel deeply insecure, maybe even inferior and inadequate most of the time. So this is how it's playing out in your life, this worthiness issue. And others often chronically devalue and underestimate you. So they are coming up with hmm, comments that don't make you feel good, if I can say it like that very briefly. They can be criticizing you or they can be making you not feel good about yourself. They can leave you without warning in relationships. Um, they might not value what you provide for them and they may even abuse you and take advantage of your generosity, um, abuse your generosity. They don't pay you what you're worth. And this last thing is sometimes it is a bit difficult for my clients to grasp that you are actually worthy of being surrounded by people who support your blossoming, your thriving in life, right? That is actually what we're here for. It is to blossom and to thrive. And you are worthy of having whatever support it takes to feel that and do that. So uh, we're coming to the courage part. I call this workshop the courage of worthiness because we must claim our worthiness, right? Uh, nobody can do that for you, not even a life coach, not even a lover, not even your parent or your children. Nobody can do that for you. And as I like to say, there is no rescue committee because some of us get a little bit stuck and I used to be one. Like I used to have the idea that I couldn't be rich unless I married somebody rich, right? I could have been thinking, I can't be rich unless I inherit a lot of money, but then uh, I knew my parents, so I knew I wasn't going to inherit a lot of money. But so I thought, okay, my other possibility is to marry somebody who's rich and then I'll just be, be rich like that. And that is what I call the rescue committee. Like there is no prince in shining armor on a white horse who's going to come and save you, right? There is nothing like that in life, right? There is no medal for devaluing self and thinking that you are the worst, right? So there's no prize for devaluing you the most. It's really, it's really, not serving you, it's not serving the world, it's not, not serving your family, your employer, your co-workers, your employees, anybody. If you devalue yourself, if you go spinning into this worthlessness syndrome, it takes courage, right? And the good news is that you can do it. You can absolutely do it because you, and I'm talking to you, you can do difficult things things. Think about all the things you have done in life that you found difficult, right? That's not the exercise I want to do with you, but after this workshop, maybe you just want to sort of quickly run through your life, like on fast on mode, fast, fast forward, and think about leaving your parents to go to college or you want to think about getting your first job or passing a difficult exam or whatever it is for you, but you've done difficult things in your life and you can still do difficult things. You can still do them. So let's do my exercise, the one I wanted to do with you. If you've got a piece of paper, I love writing things down because when we write things down, it means that we are focused because it's difficult to write something down and think of something else 
at the same time. So when you're writing things down, it means that you are focused. And this is so useful when we are creating awareness, when we want these insights that will make us shift our perspective on the inside. So let's take a moment to describe yourself at your best. And um, I've got a few suggestions, but they're very general. Like I'm compassionate, I'm kind, I'm generous with people I love, I show understanding, I listen. This is very general and it's all true of me, but if I really want to feel, really want to feel how worthy I am, then I really need to get a lot more specific and I really need to value my specificity. So let me explain that. Um, I work in a business school and um, to have students see how they can sell themselves on their specificity. So it's not about mm, being like other people. That's not what's going to sell them. It's about being uniquely you. That's how they're going to sell themselves. So you can think about it this way. If you're thinking about acquiring a t-shirt. So think about you faced with the choice of a t-shirt. There's not just one t-shirt, any t-shirt might not satisfy you. So if I think of buying a t-shirt, what comes to mind for me, what is important for me in helping me make the choice of a t-shirt is the color, the material, where it's made, how it's made, the fit, the size, um, how I feel in it, all those things come into my decision-making process. So if you come up to me and say, I'm a t-shirt, I might not buy you. I want to know more, right? I need to know exactly what it is. And it's, it's by knowing the color, the size, the materials, the conditions under which it was made, all these things that will decide me to buy it or not. So the more specific we become, the more, um, how can I say that? The more our choice will be informed and the happier we will be with our choice. So when you think about yourself, as a t-shirt, knowing that you are a t-shirt, like any other t-shirt, is not very satisfying, right? It's not easy to build worthiness on, I'm a t-shirt, right? If you start thinking about yourself specifically, and if I was a t-shirt, the t-shirt I would say, I'm a t-shirt made out of the finest, thickest silk. I am a t-shirt. So I start describing my specificity. Do you see what I mean? And I hope the word specificity exists. I don't know actually, but I think it does. So when you start thinking about what makes you, you, so instead of the list I've put in here, what makes me, me uh, right now, right here is that I want to live in a chateau. I adore beauty. I always want to be at my best. I am excited by the prospect of doing something new. I like change. Do you see how I can get much more specific? And all this is not based on, on what I possess. It's not based on what I look like. It's not based on anything that is outside me. It's based on my intrinsic value. And then when I think about, for a long time, I couldn't really believe that loving beauty was, a, was an asset, right? I couldn't, I couldn't feel that that was really something to be valued because I felt, well, Loving beauty is actually a big problem often because often I don't see beauty around me. So I started feeling that my desire for beauty was 
was really bothersome, right? Because it meant that I had to make a lot of choices where, where it was really more complicated to have beauty than just make do without. Do you see what I mean? So when you get really specific in this exercise about what makes you, you, you can go ahead and choose something that you can't actually see is an asset to yourself, right? Because let's just create the awareness. When I got, it was actually through my, my coach who taught me that having beauty as a value, valuing beauty, loving beauty, wanting to create beauty is of value to the world. When I realized that, I could embrace it fully and I could allow that to enter in to my worthiness, right? Into my value vault, if I can say that. Like you can think of it as your bank asset. Like this is my richness. This is my, my, my treasure, right? I can allow what is not immediately apparent as a positive trait, as an asset, I can allow that to be part of my specificity. And actually, I can work on my thoughts around that to see that this is an asset. So I'm moving on swiftly. And of course, I didn't leave you enough time in real time here on the workshop live to do this. But please come, come back to it and please do this exercise later right and if if you're on the replay please stop now and just spend five minutes really on asking yourself at my best I'm blah 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 go ahead go ahead and if something came up well why don't you just pop it into the chat why don't you say I'm at my best when I'm creating fun in my life, right? I'm at my best when I'm exploring. I'm at my best when I'm choosing books at the library. I'm at my best when whatever, whatever makes you you. And when you've got that whole long list, I would invite you to sit down and just look at it and delight in it. I think if you go back to my, my image of the t-shirt, think, wow, this is my specific t-shirt. This is my brand. This is me, right? So you can, oh, let me just look at the chat. I'm at my best when I'm listening to music. Oh, love that. When I'm listening to music, when I'm dancing. Yes. Lovely. Great. If you need a little bit of help with this, um, no, actually, let, let's separate this and think now of a person you admire and then describe him or her. And I put again something very general on the list. She's powerful, she's confident, she's beautiful. She shows up on time, she gets things done, she's created wealth, she's got a doting husband, she lives in Switzerland. Whatever it is for you, this is just very general, but if you can go specific, then that is where, where your insights lie. Why do you admire somebody? And it could be your neighbor, it could be your brother, it could be your best friend, it could be a celebrity, right? It could be anybody, anybody, but that you really, Admire. Try and ask yourself, well, why do I admire that person? And I'm sure it's because of their specificity. There's something about them that really speaks to you. So it would be impossible to imagine that you say to that person, oh, could you just be a little bit less yourself? Could you just be less whatever the specificity is? Yeah. It's really impossible to imagine that. Because we adore and we delight in people who are themselves. We, we love when people are being unapologetically themselves, even if it doesn't really correspond to our ideal. It's always 
I think, more genuine to be with people who are being themselves instead of being somebody that they think we want them to be. Have you been with people who are trying to please you? They're trying to sort of live up to your expectations, but they don't know what your expectations are, and maybe you don't have any, but they're trying to live up to what they imagine you expect them to be. It's just very painful, isn't it? I mean, you'd much prefer them just to be themselves. And I think we've spent a lot of time, especially when we're young, in trying to conform. So we want to be like everybody else. But what we really need to get to is to the point where we can be completely ourselves, outrageously ourselves delightfully ourselves so that other people can benefit from that so we're not all the same kind of t-shirt we're not all the same color we're not all the same material we're not all the same price we're not all the same it's so that we've got the choice right so when you think of you at your best and the person you admire what would it take to bridge the gap? So I put on the list just before, uh, she lives in Switzerland, like I've got no desire to live in Switzerland, but um, would I be willing to go and live somewhere else? And uh, my answer is yes, completely. So with everything you've listed, would you be willing to do this? You don't need to know how, but if the opportunity was presented to you, would you be willing to do it? Would you? And I think this is a moment where there's a possibility of great clarity because this is an opportunity to stop hitting yourself on the head. Because if you look at the person you admire, and you look at what it is you admire in them and you tell yourself, I'm not willing to be this, I'm not willing to do this. Then you can just take all that pressure off yourself, let it go and say, right, this is not for me. And it takes a lot of the, of the performance anxiety away because once you're clear, that you actually don't want to be this, you don't want to have that, this is not you, well, then you can stop going after it and beating yourself on the head with, oh, why haven't I got that? Why am I not living in Switzerland? Like, if you're not willing to do it, if you're not willing to have it, stop it, right? Stop it right now. Just let it all go. It's not because some sort of celebrity or another person in your life has got something that you need to have it right you won't feel better for having it if it's not a real desire of yours if it is a real desire of yours you can go ahead and thank the person for showing that it is possible you can go ahead and thank the person for showing you that it's possible to live in switzerland or have a doting husband or whatever it was, right? But just notice, notice, are you willing to go there or not? And I find this a fabulous opportunity just to let all that go, all that striving, struggling energy of beating yourself up and trying to motivate yourself to do or have something you don't want to do or have, right? And then when you let go of that pressure, when you stop telling yourself that you want something you don't want, then you can always take away that idea that because you haven't got it, you're not worthy. Actually, you're not living in Switzerland and it doesn't make the blindest bit of difference to your worthiness. You haven't got the doting husband and it doesn't make the blindest bit of difference 
to your value. Just go ahead and recognize it, notice it. And if you do want to believe you can do it, be it habit, if you do want to believe you can potentially move to Switzerland, if you just want to believe that it's possible, then let's take that. So this doesn't mean that you have to know the how, that you just go out and do it now. You just need to be willing to believe that you can if you choose, right? So let's get rid of everything that's not serving you. Let's get rid of everything that's making you feel unworthy and let's go ahead and claim your worthiness. Are you with me on this? Let's go ahead. So here are some journaling questions. So I'm not asking if, I'm asking where are you greatly underrepresenting your gifts, not creating structures for the abundance that you're worthy of? Where? not if. And abundance, it could be money, it could be acquaintances, it could be um, clothes, it could be time, it could be anything. It's that feeling of, I've got everything I need and more. I like the idea of overflow, right? So where are you underrepresenting your gifts, your capacity? to create that? Where are you misrepresenting yourself? Where are you moving into people pleasing? Letting others dictate your behavior? So again, this is not about judging yourself when you do it. I'm not saying if, I'm saying when, because rare is the person who never does it, okay? Rare is that person. So where are you doing that? Is it at work? Is it in your relationships? Sometimes we do it even in our most intimate relationships. And it's, of course, that we fear if we don't do it, if we don't mm, try and do what is expected of us, well, people won't like us, right? So that's, again, where the courage comes in. We really need that courage piece. Where are you denying yourself things that are valuable to you? So for many, many years, I was denying myself beauty. I was saying, Katrina, beauty is frivolous, right? Do something or go after something much more important. Don't just dawdle in creating beauty for yourself. I mean, that is just meaningless. It's valueless. It's, it's just not what you should be occupied with. So where are you denying yourself things that mean something to you, even if to other people, it can seem valueless, it can seem frivolous. Why are you doing that? And we do that in areas of our lives, right? We, we I mean, we can't be at 100% of everything all the time, even life coaches, we've got areas where we're still working. And when we're not working on that area, then we're working on another area. We're working on that area. We're always evolving. We're always growing ourselves, right? So you can certainly find an area where you are denying yourself something that has value to you. And you might be denying it because it's got no value to others. Where do you rarely provide for yourself in ways that would cause you to thrive? So where, you, where are you staying in that make-do mode? Because if you're telling yourself, oh, I'll just make do with this, it's not ideal, it's not what I want, but I'll just make do with it. Well, then you're just tolerating a lot and it's really difficult to feel worthy when you persuade yourself to tolerate something, that is not what you want. That is something that can really zap all worthiness out of you. 
It takes courage because when you become self-asserting, and I looked this up in the dictionary, uh, dictionary, and it means or one of the definitions is that when you promote yourself confidently and forcefully, and this doesn't mean that you have to uh, bulldoze over other people or their feelings. There, I mean, it just means that you put yourself out there with that all the excuses without all the justifications, without trying to compare, without being what is expected, it can feel awkward because you're not used to it. It may even be that you fear what other people may say if you start just being like full on yourself. And self-sabotage may come up and you may become demanding or what we can think of as entitled and people will feel that you've got that entitlement going on. And I would just like to invite you to think about this. What if you just needed to practice being self-asserting? What if it was just a question of practicing? Because when you practice something, be it basketball or piano playing, sometimes you go too much one way and sometimes you don't go enough the other way. Let's say if you practice playing golf, well, when you practice, sometimes you shoot the ball too far and sometimes you don't shoot it far enough. And this is all part of the practice. So when you're practicing a new state of being, the state of being where you feel worthy, well, you sometimes go over the top, right? And you become a little bit entitled. And you sometimes, it doesn't feel good because you feel awkward because, hmm, I'm not used to actually asking for the best table in this restaurant. And it feels awkward. It really feels awkward to me. It feels awkward to think that I'm that important. I used to tell myself that all the time. Well, Katrina, stop thinking you're that important. Yeah, so maybe you've got something going on like that too. I'm really not important enough to ask for what I really want. So that could, again, be in a restaurant. It could be looking at the menu and saying, oh, I would love that dish, but not with that. But you think, oh, maybe I'm not important enough to ask for that. Think about it. So what if you just needed to practice this new behavior till it becomes second nature? What if it's just a matter of practice? So it's not about being better or more deserving than others. It's about being as deserving, as worthy as others, even of the people you admire, even of the celebrities. You are as worthy. That's what it's about. And then the courage piece is that you have to claim it and then you have to practice it. You really do. To sum up, what I've been talking about is that you know you feel worthy when you take your desires seriously, when you don't feel you have to justify, when you take actions on them, when you don't put them on the back burner, like when you take them seriously, you know, ah, here, I'm feeling worthy. You cannot win in the comparison game because there will always be somebody better you will always lose at being somebody else. So your only chance of winning the game of life is to be yourself and be your best. Worthiness demands you be you and nobody can do this better than you. Think about it. There's one version of you where you are allowing yourself to be all of who you can be, all of what you can be. And there's nobody who can imitate that and do that better than you. You are a work of art. I did once a program called The Art of Being Me because we are works of art. And I really like to think of myself as a work of art. And it doesn't mean again that I think that I'm better than other people, but I'm a work of art and I can choose all the colors on the palette to paint my life. I don't have 
have to stick to blue and red. I can use everything. I can mix them all up, create new colors. And once I've, I'm painting my work of art, which is my life, I don't need to go and compare it to another piece of, of art, do I? I mean, we can love Rembrandt and we can love Van Gogh. We don't have to say, oh, Rembrandt was better than Van Gogh. We can have them both be. So this image really speaks to me when I think of myself as a work of art and think of it, no two pieces of art are like scalable. You can't say this is more worthy than that, can you? You can say there's more technique in this, there's more maturity in this, right? But you cannot say this is better than that. So I hope this has helped you get a new perspective on you and where you might not be feeling worthy. So coaching is the tool I use. I use to design my life. Uh, I didn't always have this tool. So, I mean, had I had it, we we're just talking in my mastermind group about, had we had the tool of coaching because um, one of my colleagues, her daughter, she's just gifted her her first life coach and her daughter is 20. So we were just thinking, well, how had I had a life coach at 20? Wow. <laughs> just imagine. But we've got life coaching now and it could be for you. So in coaching, we base your future on you and not on what has happened in your past. So in coaching, we don't define ourselves on our past. We base it on our desires. We design our future on our desires on what we most like to see happen in our lives. And you can do that too. This is available through coaching. You don't have to de be defined by whatever happened when you were little, whatever diplomas you've got, whatever relationship you've been through. We've all been through a lot. Um, we can be aware of it, but we really don't need to revisit it to create the life of our desires. When you coach, when you use the coaching tools, you become what we call empowered. And that could be an expression, we don't really know what it means, but it really only means that you start taking full responsibility for what your life looks like without the judgment. Judgment is not useful. We cannot construct, we cannot build through judgment. We can build through awareness. That's the only useful thing in, in looking at our behavior and looking in our lives. It's creating the awareness. Once we become aware of things, we can start questioning them. As long as we are unaware, as long as everything is subconscious, we can't take it out to question it. So we just keep running it, if you see what I mean. So knowing that you're worth the absolute best, we work on your belief around that. And we think coaching is action-based and it is to a certain extent, but it starts with the beliefs. We first change the beliefs. And once we believe in something, then we can create it. And I think where we sometimes go wrong, and I think I used to go wrong, was I thought I had to create it to believe it. So right now I'm sitting here, I live in a gorgeous house, but it's not a chateau. I believe I will live in a chateau. I've got my plan laid out. So I believe I will live in a chateau at this date, but I'm not right now living in the chateau. So that's what's possible for me now. I can always start, I can already start enjoying living in the chateau through everything I I live and experience here. But before coaching, I would have thought, I can't allow myself to believe that I can live in a chateau because I'm not. I'm not right now living in a chateau, so I can't believe it. Do you see the difference? So if you want to explore coaching with me, me as your coach, 
you can book a session where I'll show you where you're getting stuck in what I call thought error. And we can also call that cognitive bias. And we, we get into this thought error when we don't see ourselves at our just value. We don't see ourselves as the agent of our happiness. We believe that outside circumstances shape us, uh, but it's really our reaction to outside circumstances that shape us. It's our reaction, not the circumstances. So to give you an example of what I mean by that is, uh, if you know somebody who has been widowed, maybe you know two people who have been widowed, maybe you've read about people who've been widowed, you know that they don't all react in the same way. Some people um, never recover and other people do. So with one circumstance in life, two different reactions. So we can't prevent, I mean, I'm married, I can't prevent my husband from dying before me. So maybe one day I will be a widow. There's nothing I can do about that. I could get divorced, but if you see what I mean. Um, so what I can do is have, have my awareness there to help me react in a way that is serving me. And of course, I mentioned being a widow, and that doesn't mean that with coaching, we can ignore grief or anything like that. Coaching is feeling our feelings deeply without being afraid of them. So that's a, that's a byproduct of, of coaching. But if we just stay with what is relevant to us today, you will learn during this session with me a technique to change your beliefs. Because I will question your beliefs and I will show you how you, could, you can change them. You'll be convinced that you're worthy. If this workshop hasn't done it for you, you will feel empowered to take the required action because you cannot take any action from the place where you're feeling unworthy. Think of something you want. If you don't feel worthy of having it, you will never take any steps toward it because what would the point be? And I had somebody write to me today, a very moving email around that it really, moved me because she said, I was in the place where I felt, why bother? And I think that we are sometimes there and it's such a difficult place to be, why bother? Because it's despondency, it's hopelessness and you can take no action from there. You can change that feeling by the thought you have. When you change your thoughts, you change your feelings. So you can move out of there. Once you move out of there, you can start looking at the possibility of taking action. You'll see that you'll have all the answers inside you. You will see how you can access them. You will experience that you are powerful. You can do this because you can do difficult things. And I will have you decide that you are worthy. So you will be leaving the session, seeing the possibility of change and the first action steps that you can take if you choose. So this is an opportunity, whether we leave it at one session and we never meet up again, or whether we decide to take this further and to start working together on designing your dream life. So at the end of this session, you'll have clarity. You will know whether coaching is for you now or whether it's not for you or whether perhaps you're not ready for it right now. So what I want to help you to get to is clarity. So we avoid the frustrating thoughts of, uh, oh, if only I could do this, if only I could do that. Let's just get clear on what you can do. And then let's, let, let's get clear on what you want to do. If you don't want to do it, stop beating yourself up. So making a decision around that is beneficial to your peace of mind. So this is where I want to bring you to. So 
when you create clarity around the action you can take, you can no longer tell yourself that you are powerless and you have to take responsibility for your life. So again, this is where the coach comes in. Coaching comes at a price. It comes at the price of taking responsibility. So that's the empowerment piece. That's why we talk about uh, feeling empowered versus feeling like a victim. Uh, so of course, we sometimes feel like victims in life, but when we have got the right coaching tools, we can coach ourselves out of that state. So that is what is really, um, I would say, the biggest value in coaching with somebody, it's the tools you learn for life. So you don't have to stick with this. You don't have to stay in the victim mode, in the helplessness. You can coach yourself out of it. So what if you're only one thought away from living your dream life? What if? What if you were only one thought away? And while I remember, let me just post the link to where you can pick a time for your session. Did I mention that it was absolutely free? I don't think I did, but it is. So you go ahead to my online scheduler. Oh, I just saw myself on camera. Wow, <laughs> I'm looking at my hairstyle, but never mind. So go ahead and click that link. If you want to benefit from a free session, I will suggest, if I believe that you could benefit from coaching with me, I would suggest a way of, for us to coach together. But you in no way have to take me up on my offer. And if I feel that you're not ready, if I feel that it won't be of, uh, of benefit to you, if I feel that you need therapy or something different, then I will tell you too. Yes, I can put the link back up, Susan. I hope you can see it. It's in the chat. So I can't put it on the screen because the screen is not clickable. But what I will do is I will include the link in the email that goes out. So for those of you who are still here, can I just thank you? Thank you for staying till the end. I always enjoy doing these workshops. And I was thinking, I was talking to my coach the other day and I'm getting a few new awareness, awarenesses of why I'm a coach. And great, Susan. And it's because I love people. I find people so fascinating. And I have that awareness Recently, it was my birthday, and uh, I gifted myself um, a stay in a chateau to go away for my birthday and stay in a chateau. Um, it was a recently renovated chateau, and it was a dream. Um, and I, I had this awareness in the chateau because I was alone there with my husband, and I had the awareness I didn't like an empty chateau. I wanted a chateau with people in it. And that just got me thinking that I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy learning how they function. I learn so much from other people and spending time with them is a treat for me. So you're welcome, Anna. You're very welcome. So. If you want to benefit from a session with me, don't think that you owe me anything. I'm gifting this to you right now. I mean, it might not be available later, but right now I can gift you that and I can feel good about it. And I'm looking forward to meeting you. So that's how it is. So anybody here, if there's anybody here who wants to share about what came up for them, what they're thinking now, whether they're feeling into where they might not be feeling completely worth, worthy. Well, Stella, you are so welcome. And thank you for saying that. You're sending me private messages, but I am reading them. So I won't repeat it. But I think, Stella, I think I've got the feeling I could say the same of you. 
that's a feeling I'm getting here. So anybody wants to get my perspective on one of the issues? So it could be that we create a little bit of awareness around any of your issues. So I know it's a little bit vulnerable to come on, but just think if you dare to come on and get coaching, somebody else might learn. Somebody else might have the same issue, issue, sorry, or a similar one, and you might be helping them out. So I'll leave you a little, I think, Jean, I think you unmuted yourself, am I right? Yes, you are. I just want to congratulate you because your message is really deep and go very, I mean, I think that everybody is feeling it because I am feeling it in my body that you are passing over a message that we are all concerned about is about worthiness and that you are doing it in the way which is just superb. I just wanted to tell you that because the whole you are, you are conveying something through the screen, which is really, um, I found it really mm, touching. And uh, I really envy your clients because they have a really treat, a real treat. So that's what I wanted to tell you. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jean. How gorgeous of you, how generous of you to tell me. How very caring, right? How very caring. Thank you. I'm receiving that deeply. You're welcome. You're welcome. Lovely. I'm just doing it because I, I am a coach too. Yeah. And this is very interesting to see that we are all doing the same work but we are doing with with, with our uniqueness exactly it's again so, the t-shirts right absolutely and i just really wanted to tell you that that you are really doing it in a beautiful beautiful way thank oh you. <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you wow and your clients i'm sure they <laughs> it and they are so lucky right well, it's about you now today. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'll take that. So, Susan, you're telling me that. Yeah. So, Susan is saying that she had to be less of herself to appease others. And you're saying that to, to a person who had a mother who suffered from depression. So um, I really recognize that. So I dealt with that when I was little by withdrawing into myself. And maybe that's why I became an artist. So all my emotions were on the inside, nothing on the outside. I could only experience my emotions through art, through music, through the music I played. And when I learned how to feel my emotions, um, really deeply and have them be part of me, I no longer needed to play music. It was enough to listen. Does that make sense? But I was this hurt child was hiding inside of herself and my whole world was an inner world. Nothing, nothing on the outside. You're so welcome, Susan. You're so welcome, yeah. So I know, I feel that I know exactly the sentiment behind your, what you're saying, Susan. Yeah. So maybe, Susan, maybe, I don't know where you are on your journey, but maybe this could be the point from which you become so much more of yourself in everything you do. And I also like the saying that how we do one thing is how we do everything. 
So you are welcome, Susan. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. So I experienced that chronic sense of depletion. Yeah, survival vigilance. Oh, wouldn't you? Okay, so I think this could be an insight for you. I think, um, so I'm reading a message, but I'm not sure that you want me to share. So um, maybe this is an insight. Maybe you could go over the replay to look at really the journaling and trying to notice where it is that this is playing out in your life. And then have a look at... Um, well, I, if I were you, I would look at the areas in my life where this was playing out and then ask myself, what would the opposite look like? What would the exact opposite look like? And then describe that to yourself, write it out. What would it look like if blah, blah, blah? And then start journaling about that. You will get so much clarity out of that. And it could even be a little bit frightening. And then obviously you'll be saying, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I could never have that. And it's normal for you to think that. But if you can just write after that, tell yourself, what if it was possible? What if? What if it was possible? And then just say, today, I will try just one millimeter of it. I will just stick my little toe into the water. I will just try out one little thing. It's difficult to be specific because, um, because I don't know exactly. And, you know, so uh, there's a lot to dive into to there, Stella. So maybe you want to come to a, a session. Maybe we could go into it there, if you like. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing this depletion. I speak to a lot of women who feel depleted. And um, I think for many of them, it comes from this idea that um, there's something we have to do to be worthy. So we do a lot. We keep doing, 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 performing, I call that so that we get to deserve to sit down, put our feet up and have a cup of tea. And we don't feel that we can sit down, put our feet up and have a cup of tea till we have done enough. But then there'll never be enough doing possible. Do you see what I mean? We will never get the worthiness feeling from the doing. It can only come from the being. Maybe I didn't say that enough. So, yeah, yeah, Stella, I can guess, yeah. I can guess, but maybe you are ready now to leave her in the past, yeah? Maybe you're ready now to say, okay, this was in my past. How do I want it to be in the future? How do I want it? What, what do I want? How do I want to feel? And in coaching, that, that is where we start off from. It's not what is possible based on the evidence from my past, right? That is just of no interest. Right. So is there anybody I can help with a comment, with an insight, with a new perspective? If not, I just want to say thank you. Thank you and leave you with the idea that you can never do enough to be worthy. Worthiness comes from being. And as you already are, you're already worthy. Okay, thank you very much for today. I love you all. Thank you, Renee. Are you the Renee that I've talked to? I'm not sure. But thank you, thank you. Hope to see you soon again, bye for now. You're welcome, thank you, Robin. Oh, lovely, Susan. Oh, nice, outrageously, yeah. Please go ahead, bye for now. <laughs>